Described as bottled poetry, wine has been a staple of our world for millennia. I've gathered all the information you need to learn about wine, from its history, to its distillery, to even the wine lingo, all in one video. So without further ado, sit back and enjoy as I avoid the yap and get straight to the elaboration for you. The history of wine begins in 6000 BC in Mesopotamia and Egypt, where they cultivated wine and vineyards on riverbanks. The Greeks and Romans elevated winemaking into an art, spreading its culture all about Europe. The Renaissance showed an interest in the classification of wine, its naming, its grape type. Age of discovery led to vineyards being introduced in new territory, spreading wine around the world as we know it today. And finally, the Industrial Revolution, transforming the way that wine is made with advanced machinery and new bottling techniques. All of that history just so a couple of college kids can get slaughtered on a Friday night off of some barefoot. Quick story for you. As some of you know, Christianity has used wine in church as a tradition to represent the blood of Christ. I went to a Catholic elementary school. I was in about sixth grade and we had mandatory masses every week. A group of my friends was sitting in the front of the church so we were the first ones to go up to get wine. One of my friends went up and while he was drinking it, we started chanting chug to which he did chug. Anyways, we all got in big trouble. I got a detention for that. I was taken into the principal's office, berated until I cried. I was such a soft man. How does winemaking work and where does it occur? Well, it starts in the vineyard. The surface area of all the vineyards in the world is 18 million acres. These vineyards are where rows upon rows upon rows of grapes are treated over the course of the year. Vineyards themselves could be their own video. UV protection, pest protection, harvest timeline, it's insane. Once the grapes are ripe for harvest, which usually is in the fall, they're harvested by either hand or machinery. After this, wineries sort the grapes. They pick out the bad ones, they remove the stems, and they send the grapes off to a press. Some grape presses keep the skin for flavor, others get rid of them. White wines usually have their skin removed, whereas red wines usually keep the skin. But how do grapes turn into wine? They're just fruit. A process called fermentation. The simplest explanation is there's a ton of sugar in grapes. Yeast is introduced to the sugar, which is a sugar eating material. That causes fermentation. Diagram right here explains it better, but essentially you're giving rise to alcohol and a ton of unique flavors that comes with it as well, depending on how you ferment the grapes. How do you distinguish wine? Seems like there's so many types of wine. There's a ton of different types of grapes. Six of them account for 80% of the wine that's made. I'm gonna say these wrong, but they're Riesling, Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, Merlot slash Cabernet, and Syrah, or Syrah. I don't know, bro, I'm not a wine drinker. Sorry, bro, I'm not a wine drinker, I'm an elaborator on YouTube, so. How and why do wines receive their names? This one's actually pretty simple and fascinating. The distinction is between old world wines and new world wines. Old world wines are named after their esteemed regions, such as Champagne, Tuscany, and Bordeaux. In contrast, new world wines are usually named after the grape. So places like Australia and California, they produce stuff such as Sauvignon Blanc. That's where you get that. Who could possibly know this much about wine? Enter the sommelier, a true connoisseur of the grape. These are the people in your restaurant presenting you with the bottle, sipping on it, slurping it, spitting it out. They're using words you've never heard of. I feel like it's really difficult to not come off pretentious in the world of wine. I don't know, everything that I've seen ever related with wine, it's, I don't know, man. But maybe I'm just a bigot. Anyway, if you're someone who's really interested in wine, a sommelier that I found on the internet, Andre Mack, super popular. He knows his stuff, he's a cool guy not pretentious, so check him out. I liked his stuff. He helped with a lot of the education for this video. If you're gonna check him out, check my channel out while you're at it. Like, comment, and subscribe. What about the vessel that seals the essence of the wine? The cork or the screw cap? There's a ton of varieties of corks, capped, synthetic, grainy. All of them function to prevent oxygen from entering the bottle and tampering the wine. Corks are more tradition-based, and more than half of the corks in wine bottles around the world are made in Portugal. Fun fact. If you ever wonder why wine bottles need to be stored on their side, it's to keep the cork moist to prevent oxidation occurring upon the wine. The screw cap, on the other hand, 
Less ideal for the aging, more ideal for the partying. They associate the screw cap with just cheap degeneracy, and they might be right with that association. They might be right. So I figured it would be good to answer a few of the most commonly asked questions about wine in this video. Why do you get headaches when you drink wine? Well, aside from the fact that you get super drunk all the time and embarrass yourself in front of all of your friends, alcohol obviously dehydrates you. The real reason is wine is high in histamines. These are chemicals that are activated in the immune response, and too many histamines will throw your central nervous system out of whack. Is champagne wine? It is. It's actually just a sparkling wine. All sparkling wines are actually fermented twice. Once during the initial press, and a second time in the bottle, which gives rise to the bubbles and the carbonation. Why do people taste wine before they drink it? You see, they bring the wine bottles out and they're swirling it around and they look pretentious. What's that about? Your average joke could figure out the wine is being checked for faults, but what kind of faults could there be? Most common fault is cork taint. Taint. About 5% of wine bottles have cork taint. Taint. It's where small scale or large scale mold builds up in the cork and alters the aroma and the taste of the wine. Wine holds a special place in my heart, not for drinking it, but for the story, the tradition, the culture. My Nono made wine my entire life and he turned it into a true family tradition. He would bottle thousands of bottles year over year and he would only give them out to his friends. He would never charge them. What a true legend. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's been another elaboration banger. I did some extensive research. Maybe I didn't elaborate too in depth on anything, but I'll add more resources in the comments if you wanna learn more about wine. There's a whole world out there of wine. There's over a thousand terms dedicated just to wine. There's websites for it. So hopefully you learned something new in this video. And if you did, you should like, comment, and subscribe. Give me a suggestion for the next one. Until then, I'm out. Enjoy your weekend. Boom.